very warm welcome to our worship service this morning. Um, we want to welcome our local communities from Hatfield East and Hatfield South, as well as our global community that checks in with us on a Sunday to come and worship with us. From our East and South communities, we do just want to say on, your, on our website and our local platforms, please to check any announcements um, regarding how things are rolling out at this time. From our global community, we just want to say welcome to the regular viewers, welcome to those that are with us for the first time. Our top five nations that check in regularly are the USA, the UK, France, the Netherlands, and right across to India. So welcome everybody. We're excited to worship together today and in light of our common challenge at the moment, the COVID-19. I've asked a good friend, part of our community, Dan Erickson. He's a missionary from the US that ministers here in South Africa and he's written a blessing around COVID-19. And I think it's perfect, the perfect way to start our service together. Thank you, Dan. How can we bless in times of disease? We who are natural spreaders, our lives dedicated to pandemics of health. Holding back is strange to us. We're huggers, handshakers, kissers of both cheeks. Our greetings are stunted in this plague. We are crossers of paths, of borders. We embed ourselves, many of us. We are foreign bodies. We long to be pathogens of purity. How do we bless in these days? We bless as we always have, with love balanced on wisdom in defiance of both negligence and fear. So I bless you, spreaders of the gospel in Jesus' name with noses sensitive to opportunity able to discern accurately where love must be applied in our neighborhoods, in our atmospheres. I bless you in Jesus' name with the easy breath of God's spirit, wholesome, pure, and deeply good, who comforts and drives us to comfort, who ministers and drives us to minister. I bless you in Jesus' name with the wisdom of your lives, that they will be neither wasted nor unspent. And may God, who inhabits all times, both before and after safety, before and after illnesses, before and after death, may he advance his kingdom. And may it be a breath of healing in our world the natural exhale of the gospel that we spread. So what a privilege to worship together. Join us as we focus on the Lord, as we center on Jesus, and as we spend our lives in blessing. Thank you. Thank you.
look a promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you
light is coming for the heart that holds on. The glorious light beyond all compare. And there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, we'll live to know you're here on the earth. that you will never let go and that you are so mighty to save in all circumstances Lord
that's never failing Let mercy fall on me Everyone needs forgiveness The kindness of a savior The hope of nations Savior, he can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever, offer of salvation he rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave So take me as you find me All my fears and failures
been worshipping, um, Karina just saw a picture that I think is relevant in our worship, if you just listen to her. I just saw um, just the Lord's delight as he was seeing all these different, all these different children meeting in different spaces um, and just being like, us being like poles to the Lord and the different poles that are individuals or people meeting in, in, in smaller spaces, but to him it is, he's seeing his beautiful bride and he's seeing the gown of the bride being just covered with these beautiful poles and him just delighting in his bride. And however we meet, if we meet in small places and spaces, um, to him we are equally beautiful because we are his bride. So I just felt as Mika was singing in tongues in a heavenly language as we were worshiping, that the interpretation was that picture of the bride's gown, um, which, is, which stretches across the world. And the picture of, the, of these pearls, which is us individually, that the Lord is threading and sewing onto this garment that is the bride of Christ.
to you are all things you deserve the glory all the saints and angels they bow before your throne all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and say Invited Pastor Ian up just to share scripture with us, please. It's from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13 in the message translation. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God's decree. So I'm going to ask Pastor Louis to pray for us now as a global community, as a local community, as believers across this very beautiful world of ours. And I, if I wonder if I could ask the worship team just to sing the day and night, night and day. Um, so just to sing that as Pastor Louis prays for us um, in this place of adoring God. Thank you. Dear Father, we just want to thank you that you are so, so good. You are a good Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. Thank you for your presence right here with us, with every family, with every person that is joining us in their lounge or wherever they are partaking in this service. Thank you that you are with each of us. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us as a nation, that you are with this world at this time. And we trust you, Lord. We put our hope and our faith in you and we trust in your ability to guide us, to lead us through this time. Thank you that you are our healer. Thank you that you are our protector, that you are our provider. And I, I just pray that every person right now would sense your peace, that we would just rest in you, knowing that you've got us, Lord, that you are with us. And that as we continue with this, time together in this service that by your spirit you will lead us that you will speak to us that you would just be present with us thank you lord we love you so much in jesus name amen Hello family, I hope you are doing really well. I 
I don't know how it's going in your house. In our house, it's definitely interesting times. We had to have a meeting last night as a family and talk about how we're going to do this time and our rhythms and you know, are we going to have people around the house and all of these things and just make sure that, that, that we're in a good space. But I just want you to know I'm praying for you and I pray that you will be doing really well in this time. I pray that you'll use whatever is going on in your life as, a, as an opportunity for, for growth, for moving forward. If you are in, alone, that even in those times you will feel just God's presence. I pray that you will do well emotionally during this time. That you would feel, not, not feel alone. Don't let fear overcome you. But let's remember to take every thought captive and submit them to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I pray for you physically that you would feel healthy. That you would be healthy. That you would stay strong in this time. And, and if you are sick or not doing so well, may the hand of the Lord be upon you. And, and if you know, we pray that nobody would uh, contract this coronavirus. But if you do, we pray for you. We pray and we know that God's hand is with you and that he's your healer and that he loves you and that he cares for you. So thank you for joining us in this service this morning. Thank you for being with us. And over the next couple of weeks, this is how, one of the ways that we're going to engage and, and, and spend time together. I know it's a little different. It's definitely very different for me. Uh, it's, it's interesting to get used to the idea of talking as a prolonged period of time to you over a camera and not seeing your faces and being with you. And I look forward to the day, hopefully not too long from now, that we can be together again. But right now we are, we are really wanting to support the call of the president to practice the disciplines or that he's asked us to do, of which one is that we keep distance and that we don't gather as big crowds. And as a church, we, we think it's the right thing to do, obviously, and we fully support that. And uh, ask you to support that. And, um, but it's, aren't we so blessed to live in a time where technology helps us, that we, can't, uh, that we don't have to be separate from one another, but that we can still be social, we can connect. And I want to encourage you, let's, let's stay connected over this time. And let's keep our practices. Let's keep doing the things that we've always done. Let's worship together. And we do it in different ways, but let's worship together as a community. Let's, let's break the word together as we're going to do this morning. And one of our, of our habits that we've always done is we, we give tithes and offerings. And I want to encourage you during this time to, and ask you from, from our side to continue to pay your tithes and offerings. We know that uh, people are concerned and we know business people are in interesting times and having to deal with the realities of that. And, and, and we're putting things in place to make sure that we're supporting you and helping you. But this is an important time to continue that habit of also supporting your church. And I want to, right at this moment, uh, invite you to give your tithes and your offerings as we would normally have done in a service. The good news is you don't have to pass a basket on. All you have to do is just use Whatever way that's going to come up on the screen for you to, to give your tithes and, and your offerings to the church. Now, we have the Hatfield Christian Church South joining us. And I want to say really welcome to everybody from the Hatfield Christian Church South and also Hatfield Christian Church here in the east of Pretoria. I want to say so welcome to everybody from both communities. And I know we've got people from other uh, churches that may even join us or people that didn't normally come to any of our churches. You are so welcome to join us. I want to ask you that if you're from Hatfield Christian Church here at Mainland, if you used to always come to the service here at Mainland, and this is the church where you worship at, then you'll see on the screen where it says Hatfield Christian Church, that that's, and the bank accounts for Hatfield Christian Church, and that's where you give, or through the snap scan, you give to Hatfield Christian Church. If you used to worship in Centurion in Erasmus Street at the Hatfield Christian Church South, then that's where your giving goes to, and you'll see the Hatfield Christian Church South bank account details come up on the screen there. If, if you're not from our church and, and you ha you're not part of any other church, you're also welcome to support us and give during this time. If you're a member of another church and you're visiting with us, you are making use of this online platform, can I encourage you, if you're a member of another church, to keep on giving to your own church? Make sure that you know what their banking details are. Perhaps they're not able to produce a service for you or do what we can do. And, um, and perhaps you're joining us on the radio and you're listening to the service um, because you, you can't be with your own church, but still give to them. Give to your own local church. I, it's our heart that every local church will thrive in this time, will do well, will, will continue to be the voice of the Lord to their community. And uh, so please support your local church in that. And thank you for keeping on giving and keeping on supporting us and, and being with us in every way. So um, please remember to give. Right now what I'd like to do is to 
spend a little bit of time with you around the word of the Lord. Um, for those of you that have been with us over the beginning of this year, you'll know that we're busy with a series entitled Love Revolution. And I, you know, I couldn't help but think about it as uh, preparing just for today, even in thinking about this time that we are in and how quickly things are changing that you know, the Lord knew what he was saying to us when he said we've got to talk about love revolution. Because certainly we're going through times that have a revolutionary quality about them. I think, you know, I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know how long we're going to have to practice distancing ourselves from people. It, I think it may probably be longer than what we hope. And I think it's going to affect our behavior and change the way we do things. But we want this to be a time where the love of God actually changes. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. How do we in this time with these realities, still bring the love of God to each other. I don't know how you've experienced this week. I mean, we were together in an elders meeting actually on Sunday night here at Hatfield Christian Church in the East. And uh, as, as we were talking about what could be the things that we had to do, and we were explaining to some of the elders what the processes are that we've been trying to put in place to prepare, to be ready for if this um, if, if there's restrictions in our gatherings. And while we were talk, still talking about it, suddenly the messages started coming through and the announcement from the, the president. And so right there we had to start cha- making our plans and, and change and think. And it's, I must be telling, tell you, it's for me and I think for us here in the church, um, working with it this week and having to change so many things, it, we've learned a mile a minute at the moment. It's been an interesting time. So I don't know what it's been like for you in your workspace or in your family or in your business. And I pray that you would experience the grace of God and and that they would be strengthening for you, that you'd feel hopeful in this time. Because I'm convinced that this this is going to be a time where the church of the Lord Jesus, not just the organized church, but the church, us, the people, are going to shine for the Lord Jesus. Remember last year the Lord said to us, Arise, shine from Isaiah 61. I think this is going to be a great time. Not only our church, our two churches and and our community, but for every believer to arise and shine and let the glory of the Lord be seen on the earth in this time. But that can only happen if we, if we stay to God's principles and, and we don't get pushed to go the way that everybody else is going. That fear doesn't guide us and fear doesn't lead us and, and self-preservation doesn't become the thing that motivates our actions. But that love, the love of God, the love we have for Him, And the love that we reflect from him to each other and that we share with other people that if that can be the thing that motivates us during this time, this can be a love revolution that takes place. And God can do amazing things right there in your home, in your life, in wherever you are. So let's let's pull together. I'll be honest with you, as as I've been going through so many things this week and experiencing things and first of all you know as I'm listening to some some of the news uh, reports from across the world and watching different leaders how they're dealing with this situation then friends of mine from different parts of the world pastors that are leading different churches and talking with them and seeing what they're doing and the decisions they're making and then in our own team the decisions we've had to make and the, suddenly the things that we're talking about that we've we've never spoken about and and uh, it, I just couldn't help but feel it's like you're in one of those disaster movies almost. I'm sure you felt like that. I'm sure you felt over this week that I'm, I'm like in a movie. It's like those movies that we've all seen. You know those movies where it's like the aliens land on the earth and, and suddenly it changes all of life. Everything happens differently. And normally if you watch those movies, there's like a, there's a progression that takes place. There's a story that develops. A story, as I've observed, it often goes like this. is, is The event happens. And then people start moving away from populated areas because they, they're trying to find places of safety. They go into more quieter places, like they go to the countryside and, and, they, and they try and get away from danger in the populated places. And then once they've they found a bit of a safe place, they start looking for food and they start gathering materials and resources that they need. And, and, and then it's normally a period that settles in where they start thinking now, who can I trust and, you know, who, who can't I trust? There's normally in a movie like that a scene where, where perhaps a family is hold, you know, in their home or in a home or in a space and there's a knock on the door. And it's like, should we let the person in or do we leave them outside? Can we trust them? Can't we trust them? And you see this progression that goes on in a story and you see how, how everybody moves towards this space of self-preservation and, and perhaps just thinking about me and mine. And as long as we're okay, 
then everything's okay. But I want to tell you, as the church of the Lord Jesus, as believers, as Christians, we, we can't go that way. Yes, we've got to be responsible. And I want to talk about that a little bit just now. And we, we've got to make good decisions. But we can't let that be the story. We can't go that way. We've got to find what is the way that God wants us to live during this time. What's the way we've got to go so that his kingdom can be shared? I mean, it's been interesting this week. We, Natasha and I found some time somewhere, and, and we were going to have to do our monthly grocery shopping in any case. So we went to a, a store and, and uh, did some grocery shopping, and, uh, but there were already some shelves that were empty, like the toilet paper shelf. There was no toilet paper to be bought. Now, we found some somewhere else, but it's like I'm sure you've also laughed about this and in your social groups have, or WhatsApp or something, a photo about this and toilet paper. Who knew that when it all comes down to this, that we've now discovered that the most basic human need is toilet paper. That's the thing we want above everything else. Why is that? How, where, how did this happen, people? Why has toilet paper suddenly become so important and I've been reading some psychologists and sociologists talk about this and and they say you know in a time like this where, where people feel their lives are taking on a form and and things are happening that's out of their control they, they grab for certain things that they can take control over and and one of the things that we can want to control is that we that we have enough of certain things that that helps us to live the way we want to live our lives and but there's there's not too much we can do so we so we almost try and do the little things we can and hope that that will give us security and comfort. And, and perhaps that's part of why everybody, just as long as we have enough toilet paper and tin food, then, then we're going to be okay because that's what we can control. I understand that. I know what it feels like to feel like that. But there's something different in us. We have a hope. We have a life in us because of the Lord Jesus. And we have the, the word, and I'm so thankful for the word during this time, that we can come together as a community of faith and take our experiences and our challenges and our struggles and our fears and our concerns and our hopes and our dreams and we bring it all to the Word and by the Spirit of God, the Word speaks to us. And the Word tells us how to, how to live during a time like this. And, and, and I think one of the things in the Scripture and in the Bible in, has been so clear right from the beginning and right from the earliest times, the things that God, one of the things that God's instituted through His Word is that we cannot live just for ourselves. We can't live, no matter what the pressure is on us, what the, the, the crisis of the time is, we can't live and just be concerned about ourselves. We have to be concerned beyond ourselves. We have to think about how can we help others and assist others during this time. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the word Jew, the Jew, as we talk about the Old Testament, that word comes from the word Judah. It's an it's a adaptation of the word Judah. And the word Judah, which was the, the people of God, comes from the term, and the, it's a term that actually means to care for others beyond yourself. And uh, for instance, we read about this in God's law in Leviticus 19 verse 16. It says the following. Do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. I am the Lord. And evidently it's still law in Israel today. One of the few, if not the only country in the world, where if you see somebody being attacked and you do nothing, you can actually also be held legally accountable because you did nothing. Because God's law says when something happens... We can't go the way of withdrawing. We can't go the way of saying that's that person's problem. We have to, because of who God is, start saying, now, what is God asking of me to do in this situation? How do I handle this situation? I think Jesus embodied that when he came to earth. I mean, he came literally and made our problems his problem. The scripture says in Philippians that he didn't, he didn't stay up there with, and, and stay in heaven. He came. And he came and experienced and lived among us so that he could help us deal with our problems and, and deal with our problems that we were facing. And one of the ways that we see Jesus doing this is, is for instance, how he dealt with lepers in his time. And I, it's, I, as I was seeing this thing going on and, and how we were, you know, we can't touch each other and, and have contact with people. And I thought of Jesus and ministering to lepers, people in his time that, you also couldn't touch 
for medical reasons. And in Luke 17, we read about an occasion where Jesus encountered some lepers. Luke 17, verse 11. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. He's just going about his day. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. Now, ten men with leprosy, that's a threatening situation. That's not just one person. That's ten people. Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. Note that. They stood at a distance. Because they knew they couldn't put Jesus in a space where he could touch them. Not only medically, but also religiously, he couldn't touch them. And they called out to Jesus in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. It's interesting for me that Jesus practiced some social distancing here. He, he didn't go over to them necessarily and have to touch them. He didn't have to lay hands on them. He could just speak to them. But he may not have physically touched them, but he still touched their lives. I mean, amazing. He healed them right in that moment. He didn't, he didn't say, well, you guys are leprous and that's your problem. He said, even though I, it's, I can't touch you, let me speak. And I want to say to us in this time that it's, it's right that we practice good disciplines. Now, I know we use the word social distancing, but I think a better word is actually personal or physical distancing. Physical distancing. Because we don't have to physically disengage from each other. We can talk to each other. We can stay connected. And I think it's vital during this time that we stay connected. We know that if people become isolated, all sorts of other problems develop. We made for, for each other. We social animals. We want to be together. We want to listen and hear each other during. And even in these times, let's not socially disconnect. We're privileged. We can, we've got so many mediums available to us that we can still stay connected to one another. But we need to physically be disconnected from each other. But Jesus here, although physically disconnected from these lepers, still touched them. Still connected with them. Still impacted their lives. Still did such an amazing thing for them. How can you in this time touch people? How can God use you to bring hope and life and light to people? Think about it as a family or as an individual. Think about your people at your work. Think about your friends that you know cannot physically be with. It's so easy to just forget about each other and drift away from each other and go that way of thinking, as long as my, me and my family, as long as we're all right, you know, they must take care of them. But is there ways that you can stay connected to them, check up on them, love them, even though you cannot be physically present with them? An example of how we see somebody do this really well is the Apostle Paul. As our pastors in this week were, were preparing some things and communications to, to just within our church here, they, they wrote something and as I read it, it just struck me. I thought it was so beautiful. You realize that for so much of Paul's ministry, he was socially and physically disconnected from people because he was in prison. He couldn't travel. He couldn't go and see people. So much of what we're experiencing. But what was the impact that Paul had? I mean, he reached a whole subcontinent right there from his prison cell. Now, the way he did it was he wrote letters. He wrote these amazing epistles that other people would have to carry and take to the communities of faith, and they would read it and, and encourage and share with one another. But it all started there in the prison cell, disconnected from everybody. I mean, I'm not asking you to write an epistle. But is it possible that through a, a little video call or a, or a WhatsApp message or, a, or a some, some way that you can reach out to others and love other people? I know... You know, right now, for some, it may feel like this is a little bit of an enforced holiday. It's great. You know, whew, we have some rest and peace. I know that's not everybody's feeling, but there may be for some people that feel like that. But I think we've got to realize that this may go on longer than we thought. And I think we've got to be early in the game and get some strategies together about how we're going to reach out to other people. How we're not going to go the way of everybody else and start seeing the others as our enemies and our competition. And the people that, that are they going to make me sick or are they going to take what, the, what I want? And 
but that we go the other way. The way of Jesus that says, I'm going to touch you even though I can't be with you. The way of Paul that says, I wish I could be with you. He so often writes in his letters, I wish I could be with you. I wish I could be physically present with you. But let me pour out my heart to you on a piece of paper. Let me communicate with you. You don't have to be physically present to be able to connect with somebody. Let's connect. Let's, let's, let's be mindful of each other. Let's love each other. It's, it's a bit of a bizarre thought, I know, at this point in time. That almost one of the most loving things I can do is to not touch somebody, to not get too close to somebody. And, and that's countercultural. That's, I think for us, particularly as our church, we love hugging each other and greeting each other by the hand. And now you have to sort of keep somebody away. And, but that's the way we love each other. You know, don't be that person that if somebody doesn't want to hug you, then you grab them and hug them. No. Let's respect each other. Let's, let's keep distance. You know, I, I get to meet with a lot of people, and I certainly don't want to be somebody that carries something. I may be asymptomatic. I might even not even know that I've contracted the virus, and then I can pass it on to somebody else. So, so it's a way that I love others is by just you know, respecting that distance. But I can be, still be very social with people. I still love people. Think of the vulnerable people. Think of the elderly during this time. That, that I'm so glad I see some of the stores are making special hours that only elderly people can go to the store. I think that's fantastic. I think we've got to, in our communities, also think of ways of how do we support the elderly and look after them during a time like this so that they don't get isolated and feel disconnected from everybody. Think of, of people that have to use um, public transport. That, that could be a little bit of a risky place to be at this time. And, and if you've got employees, think about how can you help minimize those risks. There's, there's many different things that we, we need to think about and do and, and so that we can be as a people come through this time together. To love each other. To, to serve the world around us. This is a fantastic opportunity for us as the church to, to love the world around us. Maybe different ways. But I want to ask you to Love your neighbor. Remember that scripture where the Pharisee came to Jesus in Luke 10. And in verse 29 we read that he, he, this Pharisee was actually trying to trick Jesus. And he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, who and who is my neighbor? Almost the, the, you, you get the heart of when he asked the question. It's is who must I be concerned about and who must I not be concerned about? Surely there's some people that it's my responsibility to care for them. But there's other people you can't expect of me to care about them or for them. And remember how Jesus answered him. He told him the parable of the, of the good Samaritan. Of a man that was traveling and then got, got thieves that came upon him and beat him up and left him by the side of the road and stole his possessions. And one by one, Jesus told of people that walked past this man. And all they would do is walk the other side of the road. They, they, they tried to find a way and to go out of their way to not have to deal with this man. They kept distance from this man. Not just physically, but socially. They, they said, this man's not my problem. And then Jesus tells of how a Samaritan, perhaps an unexpected person, to come and to come and pick this man up. He took this man to an inn and he said to the innkeeper, look after this man, make sure that everything he has, he needs, and, and then you send me the bill. And then Jesus asked the question, he says, who do you think is your neighbor? And, and the, what Jesus was answering in that, that, that parable, he wasn't actually answering the Pharisee's question. Because the Pharisee's question was, who is my neighbor? Who must I care for? Jesus answered the question not to say, who is your neighbor? He said, who do you have to be neighborly towards? And Jesus' point was, you have to be neighborly towards everybody. I want to invite you, I want to ask you, let's be great neighbors during this time. Let's be neighborly towards one another. Not just your physical neighbors. People live around you, although that's a great place to begin. Look out for each other. Con con contact each other. Make connections with each other. Check that you've got everything you need and that, you're, that you look after each other. But also other people. When you go to the store, I know the stores are putting restrictions now that you can't buy some more than five, some more than six items of one thing. And that's great. I think that's good. 
But now don't go and buy five even if you don't need it. Just because the source says you can only buy five. Just take what we need during this time. And let's in that way even love others by leaving enough for everybody else. And then helping those that are more exposed. And, and think of people that, that can't work from home but now also can't go to their jobs and do physical labor and may not even get paid. I know some companies are, are saying it's, this is unpaid leave. And, and I know businesses have to do what they have to do. But can we look after each other well? Can we care for one another? And I think that's what the church of the Lord Jesus does. So I want you to know that Natasha and I, we love you. Whether you from the South Church, the East Church, whether you not part of our community, but we just want you to know we're here for you. We're going nowhere. We're going to be here. The leaderships of both churches, they're here for you. We're going to be close to you during this time. Your, your shepherds, your community group leaders, your, your community, your family in the church, we're going to be here for each other. We're going to be close to each other. There's going to be no distance between us. Physically, yes, but in no other way. May you know that we love you and that we're together. So let's keep our disciplines. Let the discipline that we've always had of gathering on a Sunday, can we keep that? Can we make this at an appointment, 9.30 on a Sunday, that we gather together? Whether it's on social media platforms that you join us, whether it's on Impact Radio 103 FM that you join us, or whether it's live that you join us you know, on that Sunday morning or later in the week, if, if you only can get to that, but let's gather together. Let's, let's stay connected. Now, there's many initiatives that our leaders are taking throughout uh, the churches to make sure that they stay connected to their people and that people have access. And, and we want to say to you, stay connected. As I'm going to end the service now, there's a, there's a, there's a, s- a slide that's going to come up. And on that slide will be a, an email address, talk to us at Hatfield. You're welcome to send us a, an email anytime if you want just information or if you want us to pray for you. But right now, even on your social media platform, in the comment section, if you have a prayer request, if you want us to pray for something, just put it in the comment section. We've got leaders and pastors right now at our facility. They, they're waiting. They're praying. They've been praying for this service. They've been praying for you. And they're praying right now, ready to pray for whatever request you send to them. And, and we're going to pray. We're gonna, prayer is so important during this time that we pray together. Let's not Go the same way as the world. Let's go the other way. Let's go the way of the extra mile. Let's go the way of caring, of, of loving each other, of, of sharing, of giving, of being generous, being kind. And if we can do that, when I think this thing is over, we'll be amazed at what God has done in our communities. Perhaps there can be a revival in this time in our communities. Because you are the salt. You are the light that can go and spread the gospel and glorify the name of Jesus. We love you. I'm going to end with a word of prayer, but we're going to see you through the week through on our social media platforms and through whatever way that we can connect with you. And we'll see you same time, same place, 9.30 next Sunday. But let's pray together. Father, we thank you for technology. Thank you for this moment, this time that we could have shared together. And I pray for us as your church. I pray that our light will shine during this time. You said we cannot put our light under a bucket. We can't put the light of the Lord Jesus under the bucket of social distancing. This is a time for us to shine. And I call every believer and I speak into the spirit of every believer and I say, Arise Shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I speak that over every church, that we will arise, that we will shine. That in really practical ways, Lord, in this time, that we will share the love of God. And we pray for our nation. We pray for an outpouring of your spirit through your people on this nation during this time. And that many in this time will come to faith and will come to know how much God, the Father, loves them, and that there's place for each in the kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a fantastic week till we see you again.